Well, hello, hello, Young and the Restless Daily Recap fans. Today's Daily Recap is for Monday, January the 29th, 2024. Monday, January 29th. Before I begin, please, everybody, click the subscribe button. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to this YouTube channel. Click on that bell so you can get notifications of the new videos that I put out. So let's see what happened today. Summer and Chance have their first official date. Now, Summer is standing there all trench coated out. You know, she just arrived. But wait, everybody. Writing mishap. Summer lives there. So she wouldn't have just arrived trench coated down she would have simply walked down the stairs from her room. <laughs> so Chance comes and he's running in behind. Oh, I'm so sorry, I'm late, you know? And she goes, mm. she says, I just got here. She lives upstairs in the hotel. Where was she coming from? Chance is the only one that doesn't live there, which is interesting. Remember when he moved out of the Chancellor Mansion? He said, I got a place. He got some small place. They've never shown it because for one, Sharon's small apartment that Chelsea stays in is pretty much the only other place with the exception of the building that um, Lily and Billy used to live in. Now Adam has the place and remember Summer's place used to be there and then Phyllis took over Summer's place and then Billy bought the place next door and he was annoying Phyllis with all the music which actually is the one that ended up going to Lily and then going to um, Adam right Lily and Billy then Adam so they really don't show any other living variations um, so we've never seen what Chance lives but anyway that was just funny to me that Summer just got there and she lives upstairs now, she he helps her with her coat. And when she took that coat off, ooh, all in a sexy, sexy dress, they did everything but have a fan blow on Summer's face as she swished her hair. She looked really good, I have to say. You know, initially, when you were dealing with Chance and Sharon, you began to thinking Chance is older, right? With Summer, eh, you think a Chance is younger. But the interesting thing, everybody, I did some research. The actress that plays Summer now is a year older than the actor that plays Chance in real life. <laughs> so the, they could be a couple. She's actually a few years older than the actor playing Kyle. So they sit down and he, boy, he's stunned at that dress she's in. They sit down and believe it or not, it then became, became awkward because now they're on a first date. Now they don't know what to talk about. Now she's trying to down her glass of champagne or whatever that was. And she's thinking, oh my goodness. And they acknowledge the awkwardness because every other time they have been out, in, it was in the day and they were just out casually as friends. This is the first time they've been on a date because when he took her to the concert, that wasn't a real date. That was, she was taking Sharon's place, taking Sharon's ticket. So they decided, you know what? Why don't we break the ice here? And let's just get to know each other. So they decided they would each just take turns asking each other questions about their past, you know, uh, from childhood and then, you know, into teenage years. And then what are their likes and their dislikes, which was good. Then they're getting to know each other. He found out that Summer has a severe peanut allergy, which she does, severe peanut allergy. And he, she found out he's allergic to kiwi, kiwi. When he eat kiwi fruit, he breaks out in hives. 
So they end up now relaxing, having a good time, you know, comfortable with each other, and their date goes very, very smoothly. Then we have Nikki and Audra. Audra's worst fears came true. Nikki wanted to discuss the way their conversation ended. And she, Audra says, me too. I really want to apologize, Nikki. I, I will not bring up my family, my past. I should not have done that. And Nikki says, uh, and, and nor will I be discussing my sobriety with you. And Audra says, we will have a great work environment. She says, but what that genie is out of the bottle, Audra. And now that you know, you can't unknow. And Audra says, yeah, but that doesn't affect how we're going to work together. I admit, I then did take on the role of now kind of checking on you. And I, I was kind of hovering. She says, but since that is crossing the line, I won't do that anymore. I know how to be objective. And Nikki is kind of like, no. She tells her she wants her to move to London to head up some Newman Media expansion that they were going to do that's not even slated for another year. And Audra's like, wait a minute, but I like where I'm living now. And she says, Nikki, it's not going to solve the problem. You know, yes, you're putting an ocean between us, but I would still have to report to you. And, and she's like, no, plus that's a punishment to me. Well, I'm sorry you see it that way because it's not a plus. She goes, yeah, it is. And so Audra says, well, you know, I respectfully have to decline that. And Nikki's like, well, then you leave me no choice. I'm going to have to let you go. And Audra looks like, oh my goodness, you've got to be kidding me. Nikki says, I can't constantly feel like I'm being watched. She needs to be watched right now. And as her sobriety improves, she could care less if Audra's watching her because she's not going to take a drink. Right now, Nikki's thing is she she is on the verge of taking a drink constantly. And she don't want Audra to know when she slipped. Like, what was it, yesterday when Jack had to rescue her? And she goes, I had two drinks. See, she wouldn't want Audra to notice those signs because her family is oblivious. Because after Nikki and Jack spoke the day before, yesterday, in soap opera land, Nikki ended up going right back to Newman Enterprises. That's where she walked in on the conversation with Adam, Victoria, and Nick. And Nick. Audra would have noticed she'd been drinking. They didn't, but she wasn't drunk. But still. So Audra tells her, you're making a mistake, Nikki. And Nikki remind her, don't forget, Audra, you signed an NDA. She goes, boy, I know a lengthy NDA. And she says, plus Nikki, I would never ever use this information that I know about your sobriety. And so um, Audra says, but I'm going to tell you something. You've already lost your assistant, Claire. Now you would be losing your COO, me. You're going to run Newman Media all by yourself. She goes, that in itself is going to be very stressful to you, Nikki. And that's going to cause you to drink. And Nikki looks at Audra. And Audra says, so, you know, I'm just letting you know that this is the wrong decision. And so Nikki's like, well, it's my decision. Goodbye, Audra. And Audra leaves and she goes to society and Victor is at society um, but before Audrey gets there Jack is walking in first when he saw Victor sitting at the bar he was turning and walking away but then he's like no I ain't walking away so he just starts talking to Victor and said yeah he had run into Nikki and 
you know, he understood that his family went through a big ordeal and how is everybody, how's Victoria and blah, blah, blah. And Victor's kind of like, because first he's like, I'm not in the mood to talk. And Jack says, okay, you don't have to talk, but I'm, I'll am i be happy to listen. And Victor looks at him and then Jack ends up talking anyway, right? So he, Victor looked at him and said, Nikki told you an awful lot. And he goes, well, I mean, we are friends, Victor. I, I have known Nikki for decades, right? And so Victor, he jack buys Victor a drink, but Victor tells the bartender the most expensive tequila in the place and charge it to him, right? And so Jack just shakes his head, but they have a decent conversation. And then after Nikki fires Audra, Audra leaves, Nikki immediately calls Jack. Jack, and he's picking up the phone sitting next to Victor. Yes, hello. <laughs> you know, Jack, I need you. I need help. And he goes, where are you? And he goes, she says, at my office. He goes, I'll be there. So Victor goes, is everything okay? He goes, yes, I'm supposed to meet Diane. So he gets up and he leaves. And that's when Audra comes in. And Nikki says, Audra Childs, are, uh, uh, are you just leaving the office right now? And she said, yes. And he said, oh, is Nikki still there? And she said, yes. She called me in because, you know, she wanted to discuss something. She wanted to send me off, ship me off to London to head the new expansion for Newman Media. And Victor's thinking like, well, that's a year away, right? And he goes, and he looks at her, she goes, and to ease your mind. And so she looks around to make sure nobody was there. No, she wasn't drunk. And Victor just looks at her. She goes, yes, I know all about Nikki's sobriety being compromised um, for personal reasons. I know she goes, he goes, did you confront her on it? She goes, no, but we talked, Nikki confided in me and I confided in some personal issues with my family. And Nikki knows I could recognize the signs now. And so she says, and she's decided to ship me off. And when I said, no, I, I did not want to go to London, she fired me. And Victor looked at her and he goes, hmm. he says, well, look, Newman Enterprises is a huge conglomerate. There are a lot of positions. I will put you in another high level position with Newman Enterprises. And Audrey looks at him and I thought, well, that was big of Victor, right? Audrey looks at him. She says, thanks. But uh, no, thanks. She goes, I've got some other things in the works. And now I guess I have time to do these other things. And so Victor kind of just looks at Audra because remember, he's he knows Audra. He was trying to contain her. You know, he don't want her out on the loose with the information she knows. And she goes, and don't worry, Mr. Newman. I am aware of my... Ironclad NDA, I will not be speaking of this to anyone. And so um, Audra walks away. Now Jack arrives at Nikki's office. So they're in and he locks the door and they're talking. And in my mind, I'm thinking, well, I know what's going to happen there. Right? You should know you guys can't have these meetings at, at her office where anybody can walk in. So he calms her down and he kind of lets her know, but you know, Nikki, um, isn't wouldn't this have been better to keep your enemies closer? Well, no. I wanted to get rid of something she was defending herself. And then Jack said, but uh, Nikki, running Newman Media all on your own and now you have no CEO that's going to be very stressful 
and that could compromise your sobriety. And Nikki looked. Audra said the same thing. Oh no, oh no, have I made a mistake? Oh my goodness, I don't know what I'm doing. I've, I've made a He goes, Nikki, calm down, calm down. He goes, what's done is done. Maybe I can get her back, hire her back. And he goes, uh, Audra, from what I know, is very vindictive. And she holds a grudge. I think that ship has sailed. But what am I going to do, Jack? What am I going to do? He goes, well, first and foremost, you need, we got to get a new assistant, a new CEO, COO for you. What about Nicholas? Can he come and help you? Victor, Victor has him, him and Adam working together. And it's for some reason going well. I don't want to mess that up. And no, I will not be working with Adam. And so he says, well, um, what about Victoria? Victoria is dealing with her family crisis, her daughter. That's the most important focus. Plus, Victoria would never, when she comes back, not come to be my CEO, oh, oh, right? And he goes, okay, okay. But she goes, oh, no, maybe I should just step down. And he goes, Nikki, Nikki, calm down. Just calm down. I think I have someone in mind but I have to talk to the person first. They're gonna fit in well here. And I'm thinking who on earth, and I'm racking my brain now, who does Jack know that would be okay with going to Newman and that's not already working somewhere else, right? Because what really, well, see, then I don't know how Adam would like that. Adam should be giving Newman Media back. Nikki just comes back, co-COO with, with Nicholas. But even Adam would still get a COO. He didn't run Newman Media by himself. So nobody has. When Sally was running it, she had Chloe. So we'll see. Jack says it may take us a little time, but um, we're going to work on it. So all of a sudden, guess who comes to the door? Knock, 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 knock. Because he opens, goes to open it. It's locked. Nikki, Nikki, are you? He's knocking. Are you in there, Nikki? And she and Jack, oh, they're both looking at the door like, oh no. Because see, they're gonna either have to try to be quiet, even though he sees Jack's car in the parking lot and Nikki's. If they answer the door, why doesn't Victor have master keys to every office? Why he could just walk in? realistically, but what he's come and knocked on the door before. Remember, Nikki was in there chug -a -lug drinking. He doesn't have a key. I would have fixed that that day. So now we're going to see tomorrow. Um, does he walk, you know, does she open the door? Because there's no place for Jack to go. And Jack is is, is too proud a man to now I'm going to sneak and try to hide up under your desk. I'm a crowd. Come on. He can't even fit up under the desk. And the office doesn't have a bathroom. So either they're just not going to answer the door or anything, or Vicky or Nikki comes out of the office with her coat in her hand and her purse, opens the door. Jack is standing behind the door. Nikki comes out and says, oh, Victor. Oh, hey, darling. I'm leaving now. Close the door behind her. And he'll say, well, Audrey, well let's talk about Audra on the way home or, or at home. Because I'm very exhausted, dear. I mean, there's ways of getting, making sure Victor doesn't see Jack. And that's just opening the door, walking out with your purse, turn off the lights, and close the door behind you. Locked. So we'll see. But let's go to Comment Corner. Comment Corner. We have one comment, and it's from Brooklyn. For all we know, Tucker probably paid those folks in Paris. Wow. Sick of this storyline. Great review, uh, but miss your daily recaps. Well, um, Brooklyn, I'm going to get back to every day, try to at least, at least three times a week, you know, maybe this week because I'm going out of town on business Thursday and Friday and not coming back till Saturday. So, uh, but for sure, I am going to come off of the weekly reviews and, and do them at least two to three times a week and then try to get back to every day. Um, I will reduce the pictures. If you notice, I had less uh, pictures 
which allows me the time to do the redu the reviews faster. Um, because what takes a lot of time is, is catching the right shot, putting them together in the little uh, collage. And, I mean, it's a lot of work involved. So if I cut down the pictures, that will help. I've already started doing that with my general hospital, just cutting down to actually one collage set a day pretty much for GH. Uh, so anyway, I will definitely, definitely become more frequent with my Young and the Restless daily recap fans. So I'll be back tomorrow for another daily recap.